Hi students, welcome to exercise 9a, lesson on, uh, the first lesson on the unit circle. Okay, so we've already talked about the unit circle a little bit with the angles and the arc length, um, and we'll just continue developing ideas on, on this topic. So first of all, again, the unit circle is has a radius of 1, so that means let's consider this as the unit circle. This length right here would be 1, which means this is 1, that's 1, that's 1, that's 1. And it's centered at the origin, so 0, 0 is uh, the center of the circle. Uh, we'll use the notation P, and then brackets, theta. Uh, so P, uh, theta, and uh, what it is, is it represents the point with a certain angle uh, on the unit circle. So the, the theta would be the arc length. Okay, so that would be basically the arc length from the starting point here, don't, don't forget this is always the starting point of an angle, and then going around, and then the point, well that would be the coordinates x and y of that point on the unit circle. Okay? A uh, couple things to notice, uh, any equation of a circle with the radius 1 will be written x squared plus y squared equals 1. The actual equation is of a, any circle is x squared plus y squared equals to r squared, where the r is the radius. But since the r radius is 1, x squared plus y squared equals 1, because it's 1 squared. Okay, so this is a formula. You need to know it. You need to remember it. Um, you're going to use this quite often this year. Okay, uh, important ideas that we're going to make connections to. Uh, we're going to start making connection like the cos value. Oops, sorry. The cos value is the x value. The sine value is the y value. Because um, any point of an angle, uh, you can have cos of that angle and sine of that angle will give you the x and y coordinates. Um, since that's true, then you could also say cos squared plus sine squared equals 1. And that's where that comes from. We're going to review those ideas later on. All right, so in the first example, we're saying that we have a point here, the point 2 thirds y is on the unit circle. So we can guarantee that point's in the unit circle. I want to find all the possible values of y. So let's just quickly diagram this a little bit. I'm going to give you a quick unit circle here. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to give you an idea. Let's say that's the unit circle. And if x, because this is the x value, if x is 2 thirds, so 2 thirds would fall probably right around there try to be a specific, a little bit more than a half, close enough for me, which means if you look at it carefully, there are two points on the unit circle where this could happen, right? So if x is two-thirds, the y value could be either one of these two y values, and that would be true. All right, so all you need to know to find one point on the unit circle is one either x or y, because you can find the other, because don't forget the equation is x squared plus y squared equals 1. So there are only two variables in this formula. So if you know x, you can find y. So all I got to do is plug in my two-thirds here. So I'm going to plug in my two-thirds, and then don't forget that's squared, plus y squared, which we don't know, equals 1. I'm going to square that value, so that's 4 ninths plus y squared equals 1. I'm going to subtract 4 ninths on each side. So you have y squared equals to 1 minus 4 ninths. Okay, and anytime you're working with fractions, again, best thing to do, just change all your numbers to a common denominator. So if you have a, a 1, change it to 9 over 9. Make it a common denominator of 9. So you've got 9 over 9 minus 4 over 9. Eventually, one day, I'll stop showing those steps, but I think for the first time this year, it's probably valuable to do it. So then you got 5 ninths. I'm going to skip over here now. And then, obviously, since you have y squared, whoops, that was in the wrong button I was trying to draw with, sorry, that's a y squared. Um, since you have a y squared, you need to square it to get your solution, so I'm going to square both sides, so now you have y on this side, and you have the square root of 5 ninths. Okay, don't forget, when you take the square root, anytime you have an equation like this, you technically have two solutions, you have plus or minus. A good example of that would be, uh, just a quick side example here, Example, if you had x squared equals to 4. Well, when you take this, if you put either plus or minus 2 in there, you're going to get 4. So the solution to that problem is plus or minus 2, right? So anytime you have an equation where you're taking a square root, you're always going to have this plus or minus. And since I can take the square root of 9, 
Okay, square root of five, you leave it alone. But the square root of nine does work out to be a pretty nice clean number. We're gonna take the square root, you have plus or minus square root of five over three. And that's where the two solutions comes in too, right? Remember at the beginning, we said that there would be one solution here and one solution there. Well, the positive square root of five over three, that'd be the top one. The negative square root of five over three, that'd be your bottom one. Okay. Uh, so that's the note. We've kind of described this note already, so I'll kind of skip through it. Um, number two, determine whether or not the point two-fifths and three-fifths is on the unit circle. Justify your reasoning. Well, basically, to be on the unit circle, again, you need to follow this equation. If this isn't true, it's not on the unit circle. It could be inside the unit circle, it could be outside, but it's definitely not on the unit circle unless that is true. So all we basically have to prove is if we were to plug in values over here, is it going to be equal to 1? So we're going to plug it in. So we have 2 fifths squared plus 3 fifths squared. So we're just working the left hand side. So we have 4 20 fifths. So just square the numerator and denominator, squared the 3. And then you can see this gives us 13 20 fifths. This is obviously not equal to 0. So look, not equal to 0. Therefore, uh, the point is not on the unit circle. All right? All right, last part of the lesson. This time, we're going to find what if we had a terminal arm, so a terminal arm of an angle, so there's an angle here, a terminal arm. What if that point at the terminal arm here is bigger than the unit circle? So we're going to imagine this is the unit circle, which technically, according to this drawing, it is. So this is a unit circle. This would be radius 1, radius of 1. We have a terminal arm here that crosses the unit circle, and it passes by the point 4, 3. So the point P theta lies on the intersection of the unit circle. So that's that point, right? Uh, line joining the origin and the point 4, 3. So we, we basically have this point on that line. Find the coordinates of this point. Well, we can actually find this coordinates, uh, the coordinates of this point with just the information that's presented in front of you. And that goes all the way back to the similar triangles, which you might not have seen too much since grade 9. All right, so let's just draw this full diagram out. So there's a triangle here, if you look carefully. So this would be a length of 4. This would be a length of 3. Notice that it matches those values. This is x4, y3. And then we could find the length of this triangle with Pythagorean triangle, uh, Pythagorean theorem, sorry. So you have 4 square plus 3 square equals 2. We'll call this r, doesn't matter, radius of a larger circle, I guess. So it would be 25 equals to r squared. And this r case, it is plus or minus 5, but since this is a length, we're just going to deal with r equals 5, just because it's the length. So we know this is 5. Okay, so I can draw a small little triangle inside of that that would have the same characteristics. So look, there's a triangle here. This triangle is called similar to this triangle because... There's the ratio of the sides are equal, but also all their angles are equal. So notice that they share this, this same angle. This is 90 degree angle, just like this one. Therefore, this has to be the same angle as well. Well, we know one value in here. One of these lengths we know for sure, it's this one. And remember, what's the radius of this circle? One. Therefore, that is one. Okay, so now this would be the x value of that length, and this would be the y value. If I find the x and y value here of this triangle, I'll find the point. Okay, so this is where the ratios and similar triangles come in. If I want to find the value of x, I just have to make a ratio of this x value to this hypotenuse, for example, compared to this x value and this hypotenuse. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to say x over 1. So the ratio of these two sides, since they're similar, has to be equal to the ratio of those two sides. So x over 1 is equal to 4 fifths. And I purposely chose x over 1 because what is x over 1? It's just x. So I can simply say x is equal to 4 fifths. So that 4 is not clear. I'll maybe erase that and try that again. Okay, so we have x equals 4 fifths. Well, I can do the exact same thing with y. So I can say y over 1 is equal to 3 fifths. So we're going to say y over 1 is equal to three-fifths. And as you can tell, y simply is equal to three-fifths because y over one is the same. So that's my x and y value. 
Therefore, the point theta is equal to uh, four-fifths and three-fifths. Those are the coordinates of that point. All right, so now without a diagram, let's see if we can repeat that problem. So the point, a certain point lies on the intersection of the unit circle and the line join the origin to the point negative three, six. So we're gonna just quickly diagram that. So the point negative three, six, so negative three, six would be probably, let's call it right around here, right? X is negative and Y is positive, so second quadrant. So you're saying basically you have this line around the unit circle, right? And you want to find the coordinates of that point. So we're going to do the exact same thing without a larger diagram, basically. Okay, so the first thing we need to do, we need to find this length. So in blue, whoops, sorry, that line is a little bit curled, but that's fine. I'll redraw that. Okay, so that's that triangle I'm trying to find. So I know this length is 3. I know that length is 6. If you want to put a negative 3 in there, you want. Technically, it's a length of a triangle, so I'm not going to worry about too much of the negative, but I want to find this length, just like I found the 5 in the other example. So I'm going to say 6 squared plus negative 3 squared is equal to r squared. Again, that would be this length here. Notice that because this is negative squared, it doesn't matter, it's going to be positive anyway. So another reason that not a big deal with the negative. Okay, so we have 36 plus 9 equals to r squared. And that's square root of 45 equals to r. So take the square root of both sides. Okay, so now that I know that side, I'm going to do the exact same thing as I did here. So notice that this is just a little bit bigger, a little bit cleaner. The numbers are a little bit better to work with, but it's the exact same example. Okay, so now to find x, right? So this is x of our little triangle, that little guy right there. And we know that the radius is 1, so there's a 1 there. So to find x... I'm going to say x over 1 is equal to, and I'm going to compare the x value, right? Because this is the x value. I'm going to say x is negative 3 over square root of 45, right? And I'm going to say y over 1 is equal to 6 over square root of 45. And that means we get our point. Therefore, our point theta is equal to negative 3 over square root of 45. That's the x value and 6 over square root of 45. Okay, good luck with this lesson, guys, and we'll see each other in class.